Really jam-packed with a lot of information, and we want to be able to really kind of, we were talking about this earlier, Chris, we're going to put the cookies in the lower shelf today, okay? I want to make sure everybody can have some. And it uh, actually gets me started. This, this beginning part to our presentation is called Why Game Plan? And by the way, if you have a cell phone today, if you could just do me a favor and just switch that off for the time that we're together. I almost forgot that. Or put it on vibrate. But let me ask you as we get started here, as I, I'm asking the question, why game plan? I'm here hopefully to answer that question, why game plan? But let me ask you, why are you here today? Can I turn it around? Is that a good sales tactic? Yes. I'm going to turn around on you. Why are you here today? Knowledge. Not all at once. Knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Um, did everybody hear that? You got a bunch of hens in your uh, chicken house. You got, you got a bunch of hens in the house. How do you... How do you produce, to right? Make more eggs. M more eggs. Who wants more eggs? For we real. Have, we're going to have steak today, but who wants more eggs? Okay, we want to. Well, acknowledge. Why else are you here? You can get more specific about that. But what, what, what made you get a... Who clapped their hands this morning and said, I can't wait to learn more about a field marketing organization called Game Plans? <laughs> did everybody do that when they woke up? No. Yeah. You did? <laughs> why are you here? That's why we're here. That's why you're here. You clapped your hands, huh? The bottom line is, what are we, what are we here today to do? More leads. More leads, we're here to make some money, right? We're here to increase our knowledge. We're here to leverage our knowledge. What's that? Marketing strategy. I didn't, I, sorry. Marketing strategy. Marketing strategies. We're going to talk about marketing strategies today, and we're not going to talk about necessarily product. Who wants one more lecture on product? Okay, go. Oh, just one person? I knew you were, I knew you were going to raise your hand. I knew you were going to raise your hand. Two people. Denise, that doesn't count, okay? No, today we're going to be talking about systems that you can employ, and systems you can begin to employ immediately in your practice. But the reason I ask you about knowledge, and this is the, the, key, the, the, the key phrase, is because for me, there was a very pivotal point in my life where I picked up some new information that, that caused me a bunch of what I would say personal success. And where it started was with this picture right here. This is the day that my grandfather became a citizen of the United States. He would say this is the happiest day of his life. And he's all the way on the left hand side and my mom's on the right. What blows me away about this picture is that I am the same age now as my mother was in this picture, right? <laughs> and, and, and my mom asked me this day when my, when my family, when my grandfather was going to basically be sworn in as a citizen, she said, honey, where do you want to sit? And I said, can I sit next to Judge Wapner? <laughs> that's a joke, that's a joke. That's not Judge Wapner. But she, said, she said, no, honey, that's not Judge Wapner, but you can sit by the judge. And, and that day was the happiest day of my grandfather's life. And here's what happened. As I got older, my family would take me to church every Sunday. And the deal was, if I was good at church in Sunday, we got to go to McDonald's. Okay? It was a different McDonald's than it is today. Okay? But we got to go to McDonald's. And if I was good at McDonald's, Rich, you know what happened? You know what I got? That's you go to Steakhouse. I got no. I didn't go to Dairy Queen, but I got an ice cream cone. I got an ice cream cone. If I was good at McDonald's, I get an ice cream cone. And so you better believe I was good every single week getting my ice cream. Except that when we get the ice cream, my grandfather was there, my mother was there, my grandmother was there. We'd eat the ice cream all the way down to the cone, because in India, guess what? They didn't have ice cream cones. They ate out of bowls. So what do you think we did when we got down to the bottom of our ice cream? We threw the cone away. Can you believe that? Yes. Now, years later, I'm like in the third or fourth grade, and I'm at my first ice cream social. And little Matt Esvold is sitting across from me. And he's eating his ice cream cone. Do you all know what's about to happen? He gets down to the cone. What does he do? What are you doing? You're eating the bowl. You know what he said to me? Dave, you can eat the cone. Yeah. I said, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I went home that day after school. My grandfather's waiting for me. My grandfather asked me one question every time I came home. What was it? What did you? Learned. What did you? I said, Grandpa, right sit down. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to believe this. I said, you know those cones we've been throwing away? You can eat them. He said, get out of here. Don't ever, <laughs> don't ever tell an Indian person they, they've been throwing something away they could be eating. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he says, we got to go to McDonald's right now. So we go to McDonald's, and all I'm here to take to tell you is that little piece of information <laughs> about the fact that you can eat the cone. You know what that's done for my dessert eating career? <laughs> it's doubled my dessert for the last 40 years. Why? Because a little bit of information. What's the point of the story, right? A little bit of information, a little bit of new information can sometimes make all the difference. Isn't this true? Yeah. Yeah. We, we were just talking before. People have been in the business for 10, 15, 20, 25 years. Chris, weren't we talking about this? You get one piece of information, 
and it can change the trajectory of your business. Today, I want you to be able to feel free to eat the fish and spit out the bones, even though we're eating steak, okay? Take what you can because my colleagues and I are gonna share some strategies, some tactics, some ideas that you can begin to immediately implement in your business to get to this, how do we get more clients, how do we get in front of more people? Okay, so what I want to do today in a very short intro is give you an introduction to game plan. And I hopefully want to share some ice cream cone ideas with you. Okay, maybe some things you didn't know you had. By the way, how many of you ever worked with a group like ours and you get to a point where you realize, oh, wait a minute, you mean you do this? You ever ask that question? It's kind of surprising. And you say, why didn't you tell me you do this? Get that question all the time, don't we, Trevor, from folks in the field. And so today I want to give you an overview of game plan. And I want to start by just talking about how we expect you to win and how we expect to win. And what the point that I want to make here, as we're talking about building champions, we have champions in this room right now, the point is that as an FMO, I think field marketing organizations, independent marketing organizations, we've, we've, we've done ourselves a disservice because in many cases we have become like order takers. That you know you can call up on the phone and maybe get an answer, but in terms of getting any other kind of value, Maybe it's out of the question, right? Because we've maybe gotten to a point where our business feels like it's become commoditized. Today, I want to tell you, it's a different day. And it's a different day around the kinds of conversations, we were just talking about this before, the kinds of conversations you can have with clients. So in this spirit of expecting to win, you know, we have this quote up here from Muhammad Ali that says, the fight is won or lost far away from witnesses. It's fought behind the lines, in the gym, and out there on the road long before I dance under those lights. Muhammad Ali said that, right? Okay. It's about preparation. Here's the idea I want us to get away, get, get from this today, if we get nothing else from this today, is this. Part of your success, in fact, a big part of your success is really found in two elements in your business. And tell me if you agree with this or not. There's events, okay, like this one that we're at, that are really kind of a calendar issue, right? You know you gotta come here today to come to the event. But then there is a process, isn't there? Yeah. After the event, yeah. right, that you have to follow. So if the event is a calendar issue, right, the process is a consistency issue. If the event is about a big group, like we're in here today, where we're gonna to learn today, the process is usually about what? A smaller group? Right? Maybe, it, maybe it's a smaller study or other advisors you're getting together with. And the event, a lot of times, is kind of easy to come to, isn't it? But the process is difficult. When we talk about building champions or the process that you want to take in your business, we're going to unpack that today. So, it's got to start with what your goals are at. And we've got as many different people in this room. We have as many different goals in terms of where you want your business at. I just made a few notes here on the levels that we have... Uh, created and we've really created from advisors in the field. You know, Rich, I was looking at this this morning and I was thinking about your progression in the business and where you're at and where you want to be. But it, it's kind of small to see here, but you can see the various levels. No matter where you're at, no matter where you start, there's a place for you, right? Two million dollars in terms of production. We call it our income producer level, right? I want you to think about this level. If you're not yet at two million dollars right now in your production, that's okay. But the kinds of processes that we introduce at this level, Here's my question. Do you have a repeatable lead generation strategy? The key there is repeatable, right? You guys remember the old riddle about my friend Pete and repeat? They're sitting on a boat. Pete fell out. Who was left? <laughs> Pete and repeat were sitting on a boat. Okay, I won't do it. I won't do it. But you know the power of repetition, right? It's a $2 million mark. You want to be able to cement your brand. You want to be able to leverage software. How many of you leverage, feel like you leverage all the software you can leverage? How about you leverage all the free software you can leverage? <laughs> Nobody's raising their hands. We're going to talk about that today, right? Do you follow a second and third appointment strategy? Do you have a strategy that's written out? We've actually got a plan. We've got a game plan, believe it or not, of how you can follow that process. That's $2 million. How about $5 million? What if your goal is to be at $5 million in a year? How many of you like to do $5 million worth of business in a year? Yeah. Just two people? Okay, three, four, okay. At $5 million, you want to start to see yourself mastering a public workshop, one that we're going to talk about today called income allocation. It could be an option. You start selling a combination of products where you start talking about life insurance and annuity and maybe some long-term care, but you start to offer a different selection to your clients. And maybe at that level, you add staff, right? At the $10 million mark, you might be thinking about introducing another workshop or maybe adding some more staff. And then $20 and $40 million is literally, I'm going to click this again, 
is literally creating scale. So no matter where you're at today, no matter where you're starting, there's a place for you, and we have a plan for how you can get to where you want to go and rise up and dominate in your field. Now, it's a little graphic here as I'm going to walk through some of the pieces here of game plan, but at the center of this is really your game plan sales coach. For many of you, your sales coach is the person who introduced you here today, who invited you here today. But your sales coach is, I want you to think about your sales coach. We've got a couple with us here today. Your sales coach is like a partner that you don't have to split commissions with. Does that sound pretty good? Yeah. Do you, right? A partner you don't have to split commissions with? Yeah. The sales coach is actually a person who is standing by to make sure that we can point you to the various aspects of our pieces of our organization and get you connected. But they're really the nucleus. They're the nerve center. If you have a question, if you need to get into contact with anybody else in our organization, your sales coach, probably the one that invited you here today, will be the one to take care of you. Now, here's the deal. They work for game plan. They're on our payroll, but they work for you. Okay? So we were just talking this morning about, you know, talking about fiduciary <coughs> responsibility and making sure you do the right thing for your clients, Chris. And, you know, the, the, the idea that you may have a scenario that you've got, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe there's three or four different carriers we could go with. Your sales coach is going to be the one that's going to get you the product updates you need to make sure that we're totally making the right call and the right fit. They're going to bring you up to speed on industry news and get you all the third-party pieces that you will want to use in a presentation. Thank you. And then they're going to go over sales techniques. In fact, a few of those Trevor is going to cover uh, today. But the way that I like to think about it, again, is it's leverage right? It's leverage. It's leveraging a little bit of information to get a whole lot of result. It's like learning that you can eat an ice cream cone. So, at the heart of it is your, is your game plan sales coach, but when, as you work with us, you're going to find that we actually have a whole division that is probably catered to something that maybe you're not used to. Now, in the FMO world, we've seen this, but let me ask you a question. Just, just, just have you ever taken a piece from an insurance company or from a from any company and put it in front of your client and immediately regretted it? Why? Why? Because it's theirs, not yours. Because it's theirs, not yours, right? Is it easy or is it complicated? complicated. Can it be? Right? It can be complicated, right? Mm -hmm. Here's what we did a game plan. We realized that there's a problem in the field as we're meeting with clients and that a lot of times our materials aren't matching up <laughs> with where the mind space is at. I'm seeing a lot of, I'm seeing people nodding here because you're obviously you're great. And so what did we do? We decided, okay, we've got to do something different. Because how many of you in the past have ever hired a graphic design person, right, to maybe do something in your business? And now you've got to teach them a foreign language. What's that foreign language? Right? If you're a registered rep, it might be compliance. Right? We were talking about this earlier, Chris, but you've got to teach them, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to teach them how to speak the insurance language, don't you? Here's what we did a game plan. We went out to basically Fortune 500 companies and we said we're going to find folks that, are, that have specialties in graphic design. And instead of going out and outsourcing it, you know what we're going to do? We're going to bring them all in so they're on our payroll. So anything you see from us has already been vetted. Right? It's already been, it's, we already make sure that it's, it's clear and that it's clean and that you can use it and that it's been approved. Where, where we're also different in this area, by the way, how many people in this room have had a chance to work with Game Plan Creative already? Rich, I know you have. Anybody want to share a little bit about a project or something that they worked on with Game Plan? Because if you don't, I have one I want to share with you. Rich? Sure, I'll share mine. Yeah. I did, uh, I wanted to rebrand myself and create a logo and I worked with Athena in their office and yeah, they're just so accommodating, you know, I feel like I'm bothering them, you know, like, God, I don't want to go over this again and it's like, that's what they do, you know, they send that message of, hey, this is what we do and we're here to help and sure, let's, let's tee it up again and and uh, they just really are user friendly and work with you. And that's just the one thing that I'm currently working on, or, or actually I've gotten past that point. Now I'm kind of engaging them with some other things, and uh, they're fantastic. Again, the heartbeat of this part of our organization is that we get you in front of more and better clients, right? We've got an advisor in the Midwest 
uh, works with life insurance, works with annuities, and he happens to be in a very, very small town where there was a bowling alley, where everybody congregated around the bowling alley. And so Game Plan Creative created an entire campaign around Around what? Around that bowling alley. They were able to get that messaging. So there's a number of ways that you can engage with Game Plan Creative, and they can help you. And it doesn't matter where you're at in the process. If you're just getting started with us, there is a level of service that you can get just consulting. In fact, Rich, that's how we got started, right? You wanted to refresh your brand. You wanted to come up with a different kind of a logo. I don't know, how many emails did you bounce around just trying to figure out what the best, what the best was? So again, so... That's our marketing piece there, right? And there's, oh, there's so much more we could talk about the marketing piece, but the marketing team is here to help you get in front of more and better people. Whether that means we, we coordinate the mailing for you, we work on the campaign for you, but we're here to serve you in-house. Now, the second side of that coin, to give you that leverage or that competitive edge, are what we call our mentors and our advanced markets team, right? So we've got, a, we've got, we've, let me back up here. On the bottom here, we've got three folks that work in our advanced markets, and I am regularly working with one of them. In fact, Denise, we had Alan Roman out not too long ago. Uh, these are folks that are kind of your competitive edge, if you will, right? Alan Roman, who's been on our team for longer than a decade, he's an attorney. He's not a practicing attorney. How many of you ever had issues with a client that you want to go over some issue spotting with before maybe they go talk to their lawyer? Has that ever happened? Yeah. Alan Roman's available to get on the phone and have a phone call with you to make sure. He's not going to give you legal advice, but he's going to make sure that you can spot the issues you need to spot. And the other person I want to highlight here is Heather Schreiber on our team. She's in the lower right-hand side. Heather is our social security expert. How many of you have ever had a, a question about social security? Nobody? <laughs> I, know, I know everybody's had a question about social security, right? Especially with the recent changes. The first time I met Heather, I walked into our office, just to give you an idea about our team at Game Plan, I walked into her office and she had a stack of papers up on her desk. It was the day that they signed the omnibus bill, right? Changing social security. I said, Heather, what do you got on your desk? She goes, that's the bill. I said, nobody reads the bills. <laughs> our lawmakers don't even read the bills, Heather. She said, no, I got to read the bill. So she is our in-house expert when it comes to anything Social Security, advanced markets. So you've got resources that are a phone call away. And for many folks, in fact, Rich, we, we had Heather you know, to be able to come out and, and to be able to present. So we've got resources for you that can help you give you that edge. And then the top two gentlemen here, I just want to quickly mention, and Trevor's going to talk about the material from David Gaylor, but these are consultants. Anybody ever heard the expression, if you can't teach, what are you supposed to do? If you can't teach... Yeah, some people say if you can't teach, consult, right? <laughs> if you can't teach, sell, right? Here's what we're, fo here's what we're for fortunate to have is we have two mentors who have been in production for over 30 years that have done the things that we are teaching, right? So they've actually been out there. It's field tested. It's been repeatable. They've done it. So they speak out of that, out of that experience. Now, I want to highlight, before I, I, I uh, turn this over to Chad, to share a couple of ideas with you. Remember I talked about event and process, right? You got an event like this, but we've got lots of events and process that follow. John Wooden said, it's not what you learn, it's what you learn after you know it all that counts, right? It's what we learn after we know it all that counts. And so what we have for you are events. The first one on there is called Income Allocation University. This is a day and a half event where we train to the repeatable selling process that I was talking about earlier. And the way that I love to describe what this event is, is it is a, it is, it is, it is moving clients from lecture. How many of you felt like you were given a client a lecture on a topic, right? It's moving clients from the lecture to the lab. Remember the difference between lecture and lab in school, right? The lecture you were sitting still, but the lab you were standing up. Income Allocation University is a program designed to help you get in front of more clients and ultimately grow your assets under management. Okay, so we host about a half dozen of those events throughout the year. We've got a series called Champion Series. We've got events that help train to uh, Index Universal Life, where we take you away for a couple days and train you. And then we've got monthly web webinars. We've got road shows like this. So the process doesn't end. We continue having events. In fact, this year we're going to have 80 plus events that we have. They're meant to train and equip you. So, quick note on back office support. You got offense, you got defense, right? In our office in Atlanta, we've, we've, we've got a whole team of people that deal with business operations and finance, making sure that we're tracking your commissions and you're getting paid the right way at the right time. 
and if you have a problem, you have somebody that you can call. And then on the, on the, uh, on the, on the defensive side, we like to say stepping up our defense, you've actually got suitability and compliance. Right? So we actually take a look at all of your business at the local level. Want to make sure we scrub it the right way before we get it off to a carrier. And really, Game Plan was one of the leaders in this space, making sure that we have suitability, what we'd say at the local level, right? Before we waste a lot of time and waste a lot of money. So these are our all stars. Many of our sales coaches will call these folks our business partners, but they're here to help you do one thing see more clients, ultimately do more business. So um, We've got, we've got tools, we've got software that we, that we have that's available to you from day one when you sign up with Game Plan. I'm not going to go through the details. In fact, I think a better way to spend our time will actually be to turn this over to Chad, who's going to give us a couple of ideas in the life insurance space. Great, Chad. Not an IT guru here. Let me figure this out. Oh, okay, perfect. Here we go. Okay. As David said, my name is Chad Meredith. Again, appreciate each of you guys coming here today. I'm one of the sales coaches that David talked about earlier. My focus is on the life insurance side. So I get asked a lot. Hey, hey, Chad. You know, the game plan sounds cool and everything, but what really makes you guys different? I know a lot of you guys already may be working with insurance marketing organizations, and my, my answer is usually pretty simple. There's two things that make us different. One is the marketing that David alluded to earlier. The income allocation Trevor's going to talk about it is fantastic, proven results. There's also a, a half dozen other marketing platforms we can talk about on a one-on-one -on -one basis, depending on your goals. But what I wanted to talk about today was sales concepts. And I would say a game plan, we do a better job of sharing ideas and sales concepts that you can actually take, implement into your business, and either get in front of new clients or uncover new opportunities with existing clients. So it might be a marketing platform like Trevor's going to share with income allocation. It might be how to go through a tax advantage table and uncover some cash value life insurance opportunities. It might be a brand new marketing piece working well that our game plan creative uh, just came out with. It may be a new estate planning idea that Alan Roman created, our in-house attorney David talked about. Just some examples, some of the ideas we're going to be sharing with you guys. So I knew many of you, hopefully most of you, will have an opportunity to work after today. You're like, you know what, I want to give these guys a shot and help me grow your practice. So I knew... Some of you, this might be my one chance, right, to make an impression, to show you what we can do to help you with your business. So I chose not one, but two concepts that have worked the best over the last few months that have taken reps writing little, in some cases, no life insurance. And now they're writing not only a lot of cases using these ideas, but some good sized cases. Right? So not only several, but you know, not only can you put your client in a great situation, but what if you have an opportunity to add another ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars over the next few months to your overall revenue? Would you guys be interested in that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Great. So let's get into the first one, and let me start by asking you guys this: How many in the room have written a life insurance case in the last twelve months? Okay. Good. So about about half the room, and it's not a common. I work with a lot of reps, and I hear all the time, you know, and I I just don't. I haven't really looked at life insurance in 20 or, or 25 years. It's almost like at some point, as you guys start doing asset owner management or other other lines of business, life insurance suddenly becomes less sexy, right? I would almost venture to say at times it, it can become the redheaded stepchild of the industry. Mm -hmm. But but I ask you this: why? Especially if we can uncover opportunities that will put your client client in a better situation, as I mentioned, and can be quite lucrative for your practice. So if you're one of those that haven't looked at life insurance since you, you cut your teeth on life insurance with New York Life 25 years ago, which I, I hear quite often, I would encourage you to, to give this a shot. So before I get into how this works with reviews, everybody knows about policy reviews, but how we're making it different, I want to talk about bad habits. Anybody here have a bad habit? Come on, I know there's some, I know there's some gamblers in the room. <laughs> this guy included. Uh, I know there's, I'm sure some of you guys smoke. I'm sure some of you, like this guy, 
may drink too much alcohol sometimes. But think about this. Two billion people drink alcohol in the world. A lot of us, even though we know the risks now with cigarettes, make <coughs> continue to smoke, right? At least it's not like the 1980s where everybody was walking around their office smoking, chain smoking cigarettes, right? Anybody remember those days? At least we don't have to deal with that. And this is my favorite slide. Anybody hungry after seeing that? <laughs> Hey, we found, uh, I discovered In-N-Out Burger for the first time last night, so this <laughs> this uh, this slide hits on. By the way, it's pretty amazing. We don't have that in Atlanta. So, so my point of this is, now that we've talked about bad habits, let's talk about good habits. Some general good habits, of course, are exercising, we got yoga, eating vegetables. You may be wondering why I'm still standing like this, but I have a bet with Trevor I could do this whole slide by holding this yoga pose. <laughs> so I want you to think about with your business establishing good habits. And today, in my opinion, one of the best habits that takes little to no time you can start doing your business is to start doing these policy reviews. And we've made this extremely easy. And when I say policy reviews, I don't necessarily mean for life insurance clients. Some of you may not even be doing life insurance right now. I'm talking about whatever line of business you do, that's the person you want to be reviewing with. Whether it's an annuity client, you guys doing annuity reviews, whether it's uh, asset center management, I know many of you are registered reps in the room, I'm sure you review their investments, their assets, right? Maybe PNC, it may be MedSub, whatever lines of business that you focus on, that's your candidate that you want to start talking to about their life insurance policy. It actually works. It's some of the easiest cases you're going to uncover in your life. An example, I work with a, uh, a gentleman. His name's Bill. He's down in Orlando, Florida. And I chose him as my example of, of many that I could use because he just had a case placed last week where it was a, an old variable universal life we uncovered performing horribly over the last few years. That bad boy was set to lapse in six or seven years. And this client's been pouring thousands of dollars into the policy over these years. Do you think the client was stunned to learn their policy is in jeopardy of lapsing in a few years? And this rep, of course, he didn't, he didn't write life insurance. He didn't write it. This was some other carrier, some other agent years and years ago they wrote. How amazed was he to discover, wow, what an opportunity. If we can move that cash, get it into a guaranteed no lapse death benefit is what made the most sense in this situation. Now the client doesn't have to worry that that death benefit's guaranteed forever. And oh, by the way, this, the rep will get a commission of about $40,000 on this particular example. So he had that mindset I talked about earlier, eh, life insurance isn't that sexy. I like my, my $100 million assets under management business I'm just happy with. Now that that client loves him forever and he just made $40,000, do you think you think he might think life insurance is a little bit sexier now? Right? Okay, so 60, just a couple stats here, 62% of consumers say they have life insurance, 85%, so for those of you that think that people don't like life insurance, it's not true, they just either don't understand it or they really don't know how much it costs. So the point of this slide is there are so many policies out there, either old VULs, old ULs from the 90s, even some whole life that just aren't doing very well. What an opportunity just by you getting a little bit of information you're going to be able to put that client in such a better situation and again quite lucrative for yourself as well right <coughs> some more fun stats uh, I want you guys to start thinking about that next generation of clients too and many of you probably are but you'd be amazed at how many reps I talk to and their book of business is all 60 to 70 and up what about that next generation if they don't start thinking about it now in five or ten years they're not going to have any clients right they're all going to be 75 and dying off right it's amazing to realize how many young clients have no life insurance to speak of and i would argue that's probably when they need it the most when they have young jimmy still in school right what happens if someone passes away chad yep do you run your life insurance reviews give you some policies to review and all that yeah so he's asking uh do we help with the life insurance reviews? I'm glad you asked that. And I'm getting to that here in a second. That's exactly what we do. We made this easy. I'll show you here in a minute. We have a very simple fact finder and a very simple authorization. You send that to me, your work's done. I'll come back here in a few days and you'll see here 
in just a moment. But I'll okay. come back with a nice review, and we'll be able to talk about it. You'll present it like you created it. How cool is that? You're the hero. <coughs> I did all the work for you, and you just saved the client's policy and made yourself $20,000 or whatever it is. Pretty awesome. Okay. Um, some obvious reasons, you, my example, you're going to uncover cases that may lapse. You're going to be able to save them money in many cases. I would say you send me 10 I'm going to be able to get the client a better situation, seven out of ten. So those three, you're going to be able to come back to. Hey, Mr. Client, congratulations! You're in the best possible product. It's you're doing awesome. So you just did a great service for the client. They're in a great spot. Those other seven, hey, we can get you in a better situation. We can save you money. We can save your policy in some cases. And by the way, you just made a nice additional revenue. Okay. So I want to point out this is a great opportunity, not only in the short term, but what a great long term opportunity to have. If you if you save the client's policy, do you think they're gonna go anywhere? I'd venture to say you got a client for life at that point, right? There's a, a good friend of mine uh, that's that's also in the industry, he doesn't work for game plan, but he's in the business. He loves to tell a story where he likes agents to think of their their client base as a castle. Right, you got your your moat around your castle. You got your turrets. You got your archers, all designed to protect your castle. Right, nobody's getting in there. But guess what happens if you're not talking about life insurance? Now all of a sudden, Joe from State Farm saunters in. The drawbridge falls down. He walks into your castle, starts talking about to your client about life insurance. Oh, your advisor's not talking to you about life insurance. What else are maybe they missing? Maybe I should talk to you about your assets under management or whatever lines of business you do. All of a sudden, you just lost that client. So I would say you've got to protect your castle and you've got to talk about life insurance. Okay, so just some quick math. If you just think about this real quick. Let's say, what do you guys have? Eight or ten meetings a week? Does that sound accurate, give or take? Let's say four of them brings in life insurance statements. That's, let's say only, oh, let me back up here, only two of them move forward. You submit one a week, that's 52 potential opportunities a year. Think about that. What if only half of them turn out? And then let's say, only, so you got, what is that, 20, 26, let's say, let's say half of those move forward. You have a 60% ratio, maybe 40% doesn't qualify for underwriting or they get, well, they change their mind at the last minute. So that's 15 cases. Game plan's average case size last year with all the producers I worked with was $11,000 in commission per case. So do the math on that, 15 times 11, that's potential for $160,000 in additional revenue. Am, am I oversimplifying things? Maybe. But the point is, there's so many opportunities out there just by asking a couple questions. The cool thing is, we're going to do all the work for you. He asked the question, are we, can we do this for you? You know, I, I'm sure some of you are just thinking, I just got so many irons in the fire. I don't have time to take on anything new. Don't. Get a little information, send it to me. Let me take on that something new for you. Okay? I mentioned the fact finder, just real simple. Just some basic information you're going to collect from your client. Then you're going to have them sign an illustration, illustration request. So far, every carrier has accepted it. I send it to the carrier. Within a few days, they send me back the enforced illustration. We know exactly how that policy is performing. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it ugly? We'll know after reviewing that. And then we're going to come back with this personalized review that comes from you. Again, you're going to be the hero. You're the one that created it, or I created it, but you get to take credit for it and get the sell. Pretty cool, huh? So how do you how do you start that conversation? I would just start by saying, hey, Mr. Klein, what's new? What's going on new with you? Did you get married? Divorced? Do you have kids? Get a new job? Are you making more money? Are you making less money? What? The point is, if there's something new in their life, there's a good chance you're going to have an opportunity to review their policy, potentially get them in a better spot. Okay? Maybe you even ask them, uh, is their health situation better? Is it worse? But again, the, the whole point of this is we can take this off your plate. We can help get all these questions answered for you. And we can help you do this nice review with your client and uncover the opportunities. Okay, so in summary, it's simple. 
I want you to do me a favor, start asking every client to bring in their insurance statement. If they have, whether it's term or permanent, but if they have a permanent, I want you to complete the fact finder, have them sign the authorization and send it to me. Let me review it, come back to you, you can present it to the client. If we can get, if it's one of those six or, six or seven out of 10, you're gonna get them in a better spot. If it's one of the three or four out of 10, you'll be able to say, hey, congratulations, you're in the perfect policy. Keep doing what you're doing, okay? Um, and then again, we'll analyze it, whether it's myself or one of my teammates, but again, we'll make it extremely easy for you. And for those of you that aren't doing life insurance, this is really, I'm really talking to everybody in the room, but this is especially for you. If you can write just a handful of cases a year, and again, save your clients, keep a client for life, and make another fifty dollars to $100,000 in revenue this year, why would you not? Okay. So that, that's it for the first concept of policy review. Any, before I move into the second idea, anybody have any questions on that or thoughts? Yes, sir. Chris? Can you tell me a, a little bit about the trust-owned life insurance review? Is that different from the general review or same thing? Um, the, he's asking about trust-owned policies. It's really going to work the exact same way. And on that, I kind of glossed over that one slide, but it talked about there's a lot of trust-owned policies that are orphaned. Um, but we're going to treat it the exact same way. We're going to analyze it. We're going to see maybe their situation changed. Maybe they should be in a different type of trust. Uh, maybe they're using it. Maybe they have a huge estate and they're in a regular trust, but they should really be an irrevocable life insurance trust, right? So that death benefit doesn't count towards their estate and they get the estate tax. So we can look at that. Maybe we should just switch trust, maybe do a whole new policy, whatever the case may be. Uh, but we'll analyze that. And that's a lot of those tricky. <coughs> Cases, that's where I'll call my buddy Alan Roman and say, hey, Alan, here's what we got going on. He's a licensed attorney. He can help guide us. Oh, man, I was hoping to wrap up before the sizzle happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, a great question, though. Any, any other um, questions on the policy review? Do you, do you guys think you'd be able to use that into your practice? So do me a favor. At the end of this, uh, if, if you like that idea and you want to see what that fact finder and that illustration request looks like, and then ultimately what the review will, will look like once we fill in the blanks, then uh, just hand me your business card. I'll be happy to email that. Hopefully, we'll have an opportunity to work together and we'll be talking about it in more detail, but at the very least, I at least want to get these to you and you can see what it looks like. But just hand me your business card and I'll definitely email it to you um, this weekend. That sounds good. Okay. So, so that wraps up the annual review. Uh, what I want to talk about now is sort of an alternative to long-term care. Let, let me ask you guys this. Have, who in the room has ever in their career written a long-term care policy? Okay, got a lot of you. Now let me ask you this. How many of you that raised your hand also wrote a long-term care policy in the last year? Okay, one or two. That's pretty typical. Traditional long-term care, as you guys know, are starting to go the way of the dinosaur, right? It's starting to become extinct, which is crazy to think about because I looked it up this morning. What do you think an assisted living facility here in the Bay Area, what do you think costs per month? Um, not just a nurse, not a nursing home, but just an assisted living, which is usually a lot cheaper. Seven thousand. It's close. So here in the Bay Area, a nursing home would be about ten grand. Assisted living is about six thousand per month. So think about that. We all know what inflation is starting to do and the cost of health care. What do you think? Let's say we keep it a 3% inflation trajectory on a 60-year-old client. Let's say they need that long-term care benefit at age 80, which is about average. What do you think that $6,000 a month will look like in 20 years? It's going to look at $10,746 per month. And again, we're talking about assisted living, not only not nursing home. Nursing home is double that. You're looking at twenty thousand dollars a month. So if, if long term care costs keep going up, why are we writing less and less of it? Why is long the market oh, expensive? Expensive, yeah. That's that's Uno number one. It keeps it's crazy, right? It's an existing policy and it gets more and more expensive every single year. Policy, existing policy is going up. That's that's just crazy. The second thing is, what if you never use that long-term care benefit? What happens to all that money you spent over the years? It's gone. You get no re return on your investment, right? You get nothing. So because of that, there's been a massive growth in life insurance, 
with long-term care provisions. So there's two cons. There's either life insurance with long-term care or chronic illness riders, or there's what we call linked benefit products with death benefit, but even a bigger long-term care amount. You can see they didn't even exist. What, 2008 is when they burst onto the scene at a, a measly six million. Now they're up in 2015, was the, which was the most recent year I could find a stat on, <coughs> over three billion. So these brand new products that went from six million in what eight years to three billion. Okay. So these are hugely popular now with clients and obviously reps that are presenting. It. So I wanted to talk to you why we should start looking at it and then what type of product we should look in different situations. So the reason people love it, why, why do you think people are gravitating to this? They don't lose the money if they don't take the benefit. Bingo. If you don't use that long-term care benefit, what happens? Your family gets a nice death benefit, right? Mm -hmm. Tax-free. Plus, all these policies, those premiums are locked in forever. No more do we have to worry about your policy doubling next month. You budgeted eight, six thousand dollars a year or whatever. Now all of a sudden it goes up to eight thousand next year. It's crazy when you're trying to come up with your budget when you're 70 years old, right? Okay, we've got a lot of flexibility. It's all tax free, with both the death benefit and the long term care provision. So I talked about the two types of the, these long term care alternatives. The first is a hybrid, and that simply is a life insurance policy where, hey, you can take the death benefit while you're alive early. And they vary. Sometimes you can get 100% of the death benefit, sometimes 50%, usually somewhere between 50 and 100, just depending on the type of product. The other type is a linked benefit product. So with this, you're going to get sort of similar, except you have what they call a long-term care extension. So now you may put in X, you may have 180,000 death benefit, but you may have a total long-term care pool of 500,000. Okay. So let's look at an example here. So I picked a 60-year-old female, pretty common client for this. She's reasonably healthy. She's got, in this case, we were talking to her, we discovered she's got $300,000 of lazy money sitting around in a CD making a paltry 0.86%, whatever CDs are paying. It's nothing. Why is she put it, have money sitting somewhere getting 0.86% and she knows kind of earmarked for emergencies or, or uh, long-term care anyway, right? Why would it sit in a CD? I have a CD. That's all she knows. That's all she knows. It's liquid. It's safe. She knows it's going to be there. What if we could do the same thing, but we're going to supercharge it? It's almost going to be like, almost like a CD on steroids, right? <laughs> uh, you're going to have, let me back up for a second. So let's say we have $100,000, in this case we took that $300,000 lazy money, what I like to call it. We take $100,000 of that, we don't want to take all our money, so we take hundred dollars we leave her $200,000 that's her rainy day money. We turn that into $175,000, the Lincoln benefit. I use, we have several carriers, I use Lincoln Money Guard on this uh, for this particular client, it worked out the best. $175,000 guaranteed, come hell or high water, if she doesn't use the benefit, get $175,000 for her family. Scenario number two, if she, let's say she starts using the long-term care, she uses 80000 of it, she's still going to get $95,000 in death benefit for her family, right? She used part of it. And then scenario three, if you, I know these slides might be a little hard to see, but scenario three, let's say she gets Alzheimer's and she needs long-term care for years and years, she's going to get $525,000 total long-term care payout from 100000 and she even gets a residual death benefit of 17000 at the end to help with burial expenses, even if she uses all that benefit. So what an opportunity. We use that lazy money. Instead of just having it sitting around getting 0.86%, we got five times that amount, over five times, for long-term care payout, which was really her intent anyway in case she, she needs to go in a facility. She doesn't want to put a burden on her kids. Okay. So who are we looking in this strategy. I, I would say, in my opinion, probably 50 to 75. Reasonably good health. Um, it does go through underwriting, although on most of these products there is no paramed exam, which is awesome. So they do a quick phone interview, and if there's nothing crazy going on, no medical records needed, no paramed exam needed, and they get the policy. Nice and easy. 
And usually I found that couples tend to be the better target because they're, they're really worried about going into a facility and putting a massive burden on their husband or wife. So that's a fantastic audience for it. And then I would venture to say, you really needed 300,000 and up in assets to protect. If you have less than that, you probably should focus on retirement versus your long-term care. Okay, so that, that's a very simple idea. I mean, think about all the 50 to 70 year olds that you're talking to that have major long-term care concerns, but at the same time, they don't want to waste their money if they never need it, and they don't want the premiums to keep coming up. Think about how many folks you have with lazy money. We could either do a single premium or they can even do an annual pay. We can really alleviate that concern. And as I talked about earlier, our average case size is about 11,000. That's exactly the average case size of these leaked benefit products as well. So you're, you're putting your client in a great situation and you're gonna average about 11,000 in additional revenue per case as well, okay? So again, these are just two of many sales ideas I thought I wanted to, sh I wanted to share with you today. I picked these two because as I mentioned, reps that aren't writing life insurance right now are seeing a massive increase in business this year just with these two ideas. So I would encourage you to, to pick one of the, the one that you liked and really focus on it, give it three months. If you wanna pick both, that's great by me, but I would encourage you to just at least one. Um, I know many of you may attend some of these events just for knowledge, you're like, yeah, that sounds nice, I'll keep it in my pocket, send me some info, I'll think about it one day. It's, it's never going to work. You're never going to get any additional business from it. Pick one, give it three months, and I promise you, you're going to see huge dividends both for your clients as well as additional revenues in your pocket. Okay? Yes, sir? Can this be owned by an irrevocable trust? Um, typically, the size of these cases, he's asking about irrevocable life insurance trust. No, just an irrevocable trust. Oh, you're probably not going... You're probably not going to put one of these uh, linked benefit products inside it. However, oftentimes we see a guaranteed no lapse death benefit with long-term care provisions, and you could potentially put that. That, that it runs into some issues in terms of being able to get the money early inside the trust. So this is a situation I would call Alan. I think what Alan would say is it's a little tougher to get the long-term care provisions inside the the islet or inside the irrevocable trust. Got it. Good question. Okay. Anybody else have any questions on that linked benefit strategy or where that may fit into with your individuals you meet or clients you're working with? Is it possible to, uh, just ask after I mean, I right. to move, say, IRA money into this thing? Uh, he's asked, so that's actually, I'm really glad you asked that question. So he's asking, can you move qualified money like uh, in a 401k or an IRA into this type of product? As you all know, typically you cannot use qualified money into life insurance. However, there's some really cool strategies we can do where we can move that qualified money into an annuity and use that annuity to fund the life insurance, the Lynx Benefit product over 10 years. So especially with like Lincoln, they have a whole campaign built on this where it's all one product, all one policy, one seamless motion where the money spits into an annuity and funds that life insurance product over 10 years. So these are some of the ideas and strategies that we'll be able to analyze and talk about and see if it makes sense. But absolutely, qualified money, I'm seeing a huge growth in that area to be able to fund life insurance by using the annuity with qualified funds. Okay, great. Well, if no one else has any questions, again, please come talk to me afterwards. Please hand me your business card. I'd love to send you that information I talked about earlier. Uh, yes, sir. Last question. So I have a client that's uh, 85 years old, uh -huh. and I'm not sure if they have the life insurance. Okay. So, Great question. So he's asking, he has an 85 year old client. What if they have a life insurance need? Absolutely. There's a, several carriers I have that'll go up to age 85. I even have one that'll go all the way up to age 90. So we can look, so we can look at it and see if it makes sense. Obviously, the older they are, you lose a little bit of that leverage for life insurance, but it still could make sense. So I would say regardless of the age, give me a call, let's look at it. But 85, I have, I have multiple options still. 86 is a little tougher, but 85 is definitely doable. Yeah, the husband's 100. He's, he thinks he's going to lift 110. Yeah, age 100, I got nothing for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks again, guys. I appreciate your time. I look forward to talking with you further. And uh, at this point, we are going to flip it over to my friend. Trevor Starr, he's one of our top annuity sales coaches, and he's got an awesome, awesome marketing strategy he wants to talk to you about called Income Allocation. Dave mentioned. Trevor, I'll turn it over to you. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Chad. And uh, 
I don't even need. Oh, you don't need that. Thank you, though. <laughs> um, first and foremost, just want to say uh, how much we appreciate all of you being here today. I know anytime you're not in your office with a client, you're not sitting across the kitchen table from a client, you're not making money. So we really appreciate you being here. And I think my goal is that you be able to close just one more case, at least one more case this year, from the information that I'm about to share. As Dave was alluding to, what I'm going to cover today is a platform we have it's called Income Allocation. I've been with the company for seven years. Um, I've seen a number of marketing programs come and go, both with Game Plan and other marketing companies. And I can truly say that Income Allocation is the strongest platform that we have ever had. And our producers that are using it, the proof is in the pudding, right? So we have seen from our producers who are actively using income allocation, their average annuity case size go from $150,000 of premium to about $350,000 of premium. So it's been working. So what I'm going to go through today is income allocation. That is our flagship marketing platform. It's an entire turnkey system. There's a seminar presentation. There's a book. And what I'm going to walk through today is our calculator, and there's also a number of supporting documents that go along with this. And a portion of this is available to you, including the calculator, up front just by having a couple contracts with game plan. How many of you in here have used income allocation? Anybody? Perfect. A couple of you. Um, so this is a lot of people I can share this with today. I think it'll change your business. So a little background on where income allocation uh, came from. How many of you are familiar with the FMO3 mentors? You ever heard of them? Ever called you back in the day? Usually there's a couple. So three mentors was another IMO in the Atlanta area. They did about 300 to 400 million dollars of production a year. And I, in my opinion, they could have been the largest shop in the country solely based on the quality of their marketing because their setup was different than most IMOs. Most IMOs don't have a lot of people out in the field doing what you've been doing, you know, dealing with the problems you deal with day in and day out. The challenge is Free Mentors, as Dave said, was founded by three producers who have been in the industry for many years, all had successful practices, and they decided to create a marketing organization based on what they had learned from all their years in the field. One of the producers, one of the mentors, is a gentleman named David Gaylor. Does about 15 to 20 million dollars of annuity production a year, and he kind of coined the term income allocation. Where does that come from? Well, we're all familiar with asset allocation, right? Many of you have probably used asset allocation. That's kind of been the gold standard in our industry for many years when it comes to planning, financial planning, but a lot changed in 2008. Asset all allocation is all about diversification. <laughs> diversify, diversify, diversify. The client should be able to withstand any market corrections, any market volatility, right? Well, that changed in 2008. The S&P was down 38%. Pretty much every facet of the market was down. And that diversification that clients were relying on didn't work out for a lot of them. A lot of them were planning on retiring, and they're still working today because of some of the flaws of asset allocation. So Dave Gaylor came up with what's called income allocation. Instead of just diversifying a client's portfolio, he said that the most important part of retirement is the income portion. Being able to guarantee a client's income, that's what we should be focusing on. So that's why he came up with income allocation. So just bird's eye view of what income allocation is, very simply put, what you want to do is when you're sitting down with a client, you want to look at all of their assets their entire portfolio. And then you want to work with the client, figure out how much money they're going to need when they retire on an annual basis to cover their essential expenses and their lifestyle expenses. And then you kind of want to back up from there because you can carve off just a portion of their assets, put it into a fixed index annuity with a contractually guaranteed income stream. That way, their income is completely taken care of. They never have to worry about it. The good news about that is, whatever money is left over after you've allocated the money for the income, it's essentially play money. So if the client wants to take that dream vacation, they want to spoil their grandkids, they can even afford to leave that money in the market and be as risky as they want because they're not relying on it for income now because you've taken that, that problem off the table. So income allocation, when Dave sits down with a client, 
There are three primary threats to retirement that he walks the clients through. And I want you all to write these down, even as you're trying to eat your steak. Um, the first threat is withdrawal rate risk. How many of you are familiar with the 4% rule? Just about everybody typically is familiar with the 4% rule. That was created in 1994. A number of financial advisors have used that in their planning. And the 4% rule basically states when a client retires, they should be able to pull off 4% from their assets every year and they won't run out of money, right? That's the 4% rule. Well, a number of things have changed since 1994. Withdrawal rate risk is a huge concern for retirees today. So what am I talking about? So in 2011, the Journal of Financial Planning came out and they said the 4% rule has a lot of problems. There's a lot of holes in it. They said the 4% rule actually has an 18% failure rate. So one out of every five clients will run out of money in retirement if they're pulling off 4% a year. Completely unacceptable. So what they said is that the new maximum safe withdrawal rate is actually 2.52%, much lower than four. So let's just imagine you have a client come into your office, they have a million dollars. They've worked hard during their working years to diligently save money, their nest egg for retirement. They have a million bucks. And they're thinking, well, when I retire, I can pull off $40,000 a year, 4%. And you have to break the bad news to them. If you do that, you have a one in five <coughs> chance of running out of money. So you tell them, you can only pull off $25,200 a year. They're not going to be very happy with you, right? So to make matters worse, in 2013, the Wall Street Journal came out, and they said that it's not 4% anymore. It's not 2.52%. It's actually 2%. That's the maximum recommended withdrawal rate. And then Morningstar came out just a couple years ago. They said it's closer to 1.5%. So it keeps going down, and it will continue to go down. Because people live longer. Exactly. We're going to get to that in a second. Longevity risk. So withdrawal rate risk. Withdrawal rate, the safe withdrawal rate, if you're just relying on spending down assets, that number's gonna get smaller and smaller. And there's three reasons for that. The first, as she just mentioned, people are living longer. They're living longer than they did in 1994 when the 4% rule was created. Second reason, people are contributing, for the most part, contributing less to their 401ks. They need that money to pay their bills. So that's less money they're deferring for retirement. So that's a smaller nest egg for them. And then the third reason, I'm sure you're all aware, pensions are pretty much, they're gone. They're not around anymore. Uh, my grandfather, he worked for Lockheed Martin for 35 years. And when I was born, he was 62, and he decided to retire so he could spend time with myself and my sister. And he was 62 when he retired. He passed away at age 90. 28 years, every month, he got that check from Lockheed in the mailbox every month. When I was a kid growing up, he said it many times, Lockheed has been so good to me and my family because they took care of him even after he retired. Well, it's not the case anymore. People aren't getting those pension checks. All right, so those are the three reasons why withdrawal rate risk exists. People are living longer, contributing less to their 401ks, and pensions are pretty much gone. The second threat that I want to talk about, and this is very important, is called sequence of returns risk. How many of you are familiar and actively talk about this with your clients? Raise your hands. Good. Yeah, you should be. Um, a lot of advisors, I don't think, discuss this with their clients. The sequence of returns risk, um, it's not so much about the cumulative returns in the market. It's not about the average return. It's about the sequence in which those returns happen. So depending on when you retire, whether you're retiring into an up market or a down market, it's going to drastically impact your entire retirement. So Prudential, they coined the phrase retirement red zone. Like in football, we talk about the red zone inside the 20-yard line to the goal line. Prudential said the retirement red zone is a 10-year period. It's the five years leading up to when a client retires, and then the five years immediately following retirement. If you're relying on an asset spend down strategy for your retirement income, what the market does in that 10 year period is largely going to impact whether or not you can run out of money. <coughs> so what are we looking at here? This is a great sales piece. And by the way, how many of you right now are having difficult conversations with your clients? They don't want to move from the market. 
You know, I talk to advisors every day who are frustrated. Trevor, I just cannot, the client won't move. They want to stay in the market. It's like they're on a high because the market's at all-time highs. Not, don't, you don't want to scare the client, but you do want to educate the client. History always tends to repeat itself. And people are very easy to forget what happened in 2008. All right? It's only been nine years. And there will be a correction at some point. So it makes sense to move a portion of a client's money to a safe, safe money vehicle um, so we don't see what happened in 2008 happen again. So here's what we're looking at. We're looking at a couple, John and Jane, age 60. They have a million dollars in life savings. They're going to take out $50,000 a year, step that up 3.5% annually for inflation. So assuming market volatility continues, <coughs> let's see how long their nest egg can last in the up and down scenarios when they start taking the income out. So two scenarios. Scenario one, client retires, 27% return the first year, market's up. Then it's up nine, then it's up seven, and then it's down 15. So three consecutive good years in the market when they retire. Drastically different in scenario two. It's the same returns, but the sequence in which those returns happen is different. And that makes all the difference. They retire into a down market. It's down 15%. And then they rebound with three good years. Well, because the first year the market was down, that, if we look down here, in scenario one, when we retired into the up market, our money lasted us 13 years longer than if we retired in the down market. A lot of people aren't talking about sequence of returns risk, but you certainly should be. And the third risk, first was withdrawal rate risk, second sequence of returns risk. The third risk is, we've already talked about it, some longevity risk. So it seems like every week, it seems like life expectancy is going up. People are living longer, that's a blessing and a curse. That's tough for you, the advisor, because you have to find more creative ways to make that client's money last them longer in retirement. So those are the three primary threats to, to, uh, to a client's retirement. I would encourage you to have go over those in your conversations you have with your clients. And what I'm gonna go through now is I'm gonna go through a hypothetical case study using our income allocation calculator and just to give you the details on this client, I'm going to write this down too. It's a 58-year-old, wants to retire at age 70 okay. and start taking lifetime income at age 70. So a 12-year deferral. They're going to work for the next 12 years. So asking this client, how much money do you anticipate needing when you retire? $61,200 is how much is needed when the client retires at age 70. When you look at other forms of guaranteed income, they're going to have. And that can be a number of things. That can be annuities, rental properties, Social Security, obviously. This client will be getting $30,600 a year from Social Security. All right? That only gets us halfway to our desired income number of $61,200. So that leaves us with what's called an income gap. And we have to figure out how to get from $30,600 to $61,200 a year of income. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, if you were just gonna spend down the portfolio, you would have to take $30,600 a year off of the assets each year to supplement the Social Security to get the client to $61,200. Here's the problem. We just talked about withdrawal rate risk. The withdrawal rate required to do that is 4.94%. 4.94%. And we just talked about how that number keeps getting lower and lower as far as the safe withdrawal rate number goes. We're recommending a max withdrawal rate of 2%. All right? So what that means is you have to find a way at the client's age 58 to grow the portfolio from $620,000 to $1.53 million in 12 years. All right? Guarantee them that in order to spend down 2% and still give them the $30,600 a year they need. Good luck. Good luck guaranteeing that. So, what David talks about with income allocation is there's a more efficient way of doing that. A more efficient way of doing that, and that's using an index annuity with a guaranteed income benefit. So what we can do 
And what I calculated is how much money is it going to take off of the $620,000 portfolio to put into our annuity deferring for 12 years that will give them, with no index returns in 12 years, that will give the client $30,600 a year guaranteed at age 70. So I used a contract called the Allianz 360. You can use any annuity you want to, but it will take 378601 that's the amount of money we're peeling off of our assets, putting it into the annuity. Let it sit for 12 years. At age 70, that will give us the $30,600 a year we need that with the Social Security gets us to 61 2 You guys with me? Cool. So, what happens now? Well, the remaining money, there's $241,399 left over in the portfolio. And that's the money, if you want to, you can afford to be more risky with because the income is taken care of. So we're going to assume a return on that portfolio compounded at 8% a year with the leftover money in the market. And if we go down, this is our income allocation plan. What are we looking at here? So this is our growth bucket. If you can't see, that's 241 399 that's the remaining money in the portfolio that's remaining after you allocate to the annuity. That's the money that you can be aggressive with in the market. So we're going to say that grows at 8% a year. I know it's tough to see, but if you look by the 14th year, you've actually, the money has grown from 241399 back to the original principal of $620,000. And if we take it all the way out to age 90, the growth bucket is now at $2.8 million. That can be for legacy planning, for death benefit, whatever the client wants it to be. But the reason, and the important part of this, the reason we've been able to be more aggressive with our assets under management is because the income is completely taken care of. So here's our client turning on income at age 70. Here's our $25.50 a month from our annuity, $25.50 a month from Social Security, $61,200 a year. We're stepping that up about 2% a year for inflation. So by the time the client is 90, we have a growth bucket balance of 2.8 million, and we have the client receiving about $91,000 a year in income. So this is income allocation. It's just about having a different kind of conversation with the client, going from more of a transactional sale to a more holistic <coughs> approach. What questions do you guys have about this? Anything. Yes, sir. Do you have a handout on that? Yeah, so what we can do, if you have a sales coach or game plan you work with, just give them a call. I don't. If you don't, then I will send it to you. Yeah, let's talk afterwards. I'll get that to you. <coughs> yes. Is this uh, software available on the website? It is. Game yeah, plan? great question. So when you come on board with game plan, you have access to our producer portal on our website. All those tools are free. You don't have to do any business with us. They're free up front. Now, obviously, we want you to do business with us, but hopefully these tools will help, help get you there. So this is a calculator that you have access to day one, like I said, just having a couple contracts with us. So, but that's all I have as far as income allocation goes. What I want to do to wrap up today um, is we have these next step cards, which just helps us get to know you guys a little bit better, where you're at with your business. We'd love the opportunity to work with you. So I'm just going to pass these around if you can just pass them down.